start the stream. We got the stream in. Oh, that bookcase is horrible. Yeah, I'm sorry. That bookcase is bad again. Let me cover it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my glasses off too because of the glare. Oh, uh, you took <clears> away all my hats and stuff that holds things. I don't have anything to hold this up. I'm sorry. Mm. I don't have anything to hold it up. Everybody's getting a nice shot of your underwear. Uh, oops, when you didn't say nothing to nobody. <laughs> Basically, all you've been eating today, so. Hola! Josh in the house. Whoa. Terry in the house. Mr. Windswept! What? Oh, Kenneth. canceled sewing for the day. Kenneth. Lachlan. Lachlan is in the house. <laughs> Your diet starts next month anyway. <laughs> yeah, the butter wouldn't be vegan, huh? Well, it doesn't look like I'm going to be doing it. Uh, because they're not giving me any information. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Hmm. And one person called them out on it. So. Hmm. Mary S. Yeah, she normally sews. She has a sewing, like a quilting group. So she normally misses her Sunday nights because she's there. Mm -hmm. But came looking for y'all. No notification. I got one. Yeah, I saw that. That's what happened to it. Right here. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> El Presidente. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Is he going to have secret service around him when he... Uh... <clears throat> oh, that's cold. That's just cold. What? Cold. Chew away, big boy. <laughs> Look, this, this is the only thing I've had to eat today. She can say whatever she wants. She is not a big boy. <laughs> All right, we'll give everybody a few minutes. Yeah, we missed dinner. And lunch, lunch, lunch was kind of a toss up in the air. I had four carrots for lunch. Popcorn all day isn't good for you. He hasn't been eating it all day. Literally just started. Hi, eating. Michelle. <laughs> oh, and there's Mrs. Windswept. Hey. Karen, I believe is her name. Okay. <laughs> She's picking on me. Who? Mm -hmm. I like, look, this is my, some people, some people use drugs, illegal drugs. <laughs> hey! Some people use alcohol. Mm -hmm. Some people smack their wives around. What? I eat popcorn. <laughs> mm. Jack! Jack the Cava. Even though I would like some alcohol right now. Though. <laughs> hmm. Look, it is awful out here. <laughs> like who? <laughs> yeah, it's it is pretty bad here. If it's popped in pork fat, then you get an extra food group, right? <laughs> I don't know. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, she's like, alcohol, like who? <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Mm. Well. <coughs> All right. That was disgusting. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> All the popcorn you can eat. <laughs> Mm. Did y'all lose power at all? No, nope. nope. I don't know. We want home. All right, here. We're out smoking crack. Hmm. I know my pond's up. Mm-hmm. What's with the pollen and swampy ground? Yeah. <laughs> You're funny, Teresa. <laughs> she sent me a message saying she's sorry she missed our live stream last night, but she had to fix her oven. She finally got it fixed. Saved her like $400. And, cool, come fix ours. And so I said, well, she was saying it got her thinking that maybe our igniter or something was busted. In. Anyway, I said, well, we're on live right now. But the problem was it autocorrected and put love. So that's why she was saying it's good to see y'all are on love. Mama! Right hmm. It's good to see you. Mama! We're in Anderson this afternoon and it got nasty there. Yeah, yeah that's, that's where we, we were. Mm -hmm. Jinx. Don't touch my popcorn. Get out of the way of my hummus. Not to be confused with haggis. So that's not made with... No, it's with, pine nuts. With, uh... Mm -hmm. And Hearts and lungs. Mm -hmm. Kidneys and... Mm -hmm. Gallbladders and... Mm -hmm. All that good stuff. Like jammed into mm -hmm. a stomach. And then fried and... and boiled it up. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hey, this is nasty. Yes, it is. Hmm. Hello, Bandana Grandma. Hmm. <laughs> he was going to say it, too. That's exactly why I said it. Yep. Bandana <laughs> Grandma in the house. Okay, so you got me all excited. You said tonight's oils class was going to be fun. Going to be different. No, you said fun. Different. Oh. You said fun. Different. <laughs> okay. You said fun. So... Last week, our class last week was pretty cool because instead of just talking about an oil and its history and all that stuff, which is very informative, we kind of sat around and talked about a different oil and then what people actually use it for in their home. So, <clears throat> this I week... Mama doesn't say hi to me. She said hi to everybody else. I made a big deal about her being here, so don't say hi to me. I don't know. Ask her. No, I'm not talking to her. Is it an oil that Jason can taste? No. Fun and different. You're talking about oils, Jason? <laughs> so, what I figured we would do is, because she likes us better. <laughs> there you go. Hi, Jason. Hey, Professor. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. <laughs> so what I figured we'd do everybody seemed to be really kind of into what they use stuff that the common applications that they use everyday use of the oils that they have love you too mama but you still should have said hi to me first and so what I thought we would do is this week we would talk about, again, talking about some applications with oils. But what I figured we'd do is talk about, you know, it's getting ready to be springtime. No. -uh. We are covered. You, there ain't no way you can make me believe that. We're covered in pollen right now. We like, are, there's no, pollen. No, stop. Look at that. What? We're on a big flat screen right now. Oh, I bet we look lovely. <laughs> that means we're big time, like Tom Selleck. Oh, oh, she said, well, Robin was in her live stream and you weren't. Mm -mm. What live stream? Oh, that's even worse. Mama had a live stream earlier. And you didn't tell me? I'm sorry. I thought you pet. knew. No. Mm -mm. I thought you knew. But anyway, don't know how much I do know patchouli and peppermint do not mix. Oh, mm. Okay, so what I figured we would do is talking about, about oils forthwith. Yes. <laughs> We're gonna talk about spring cleaning and essential oils. So what 
Everybody always talks about using citrus oils to clean, to take degreaser. Hi, Amy, for real. Um, things like that. Everybody always talks about, oh, lemon's a great degreaser. Wait a minute. You t you said it was going to be fun. Yeah. There's not a daggone thing fun about cleaning. Yeah, but we're going to make stuff. That makes it fun. Not if you're going to make me clean something else. I'm not going to make you cleaning. So are you going to come here and <laughs> do my spring cleaning? <laughs> Okay, so um, a lot of people. High smoking reptile. I hope you clean windows. <laughs> Helichrysum for cleaning cuts. There you go. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of different applications for essential oils and for cleaning. A lot of the oils we've talked about in the past are antiseptic, antibacterial. So, with that being said, fun. <laughs> they can all be used for applications for cleaning. So, yes, helichrysum does stop bleeding. <laughs> the only fun, fun cleaning about, the only fun thing yibbidi about yibbidi cleaning yibbidi yibbidi. is when it's done. Urgh. Okay, so, there's a couple of different things. Now, I kind of dropped the ball on the first one. What? Yes. So... There's two, actually two things I dropped the ball on. We're going to do this in two sections. Yeah, we're going to do some it. this week, and then next week we're fun. going to feature an oil, and then I'm going to show you a bunch of different things to make with it next week. Okay? But the first one is actually a version, I guess, the best way to put it, is a version of... Um, Mama Oldways video that she does on um, wipes, on the cleaning wipes. So I had on my list to get shop towels today and completely forgot about them. So um, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. It ain't gonna be fun. Jason, I swear you can leave. Like you can get up and you go pro you right promised, now. You promised me fun. That's fun. See? That was a lot of fun. No, you know what would be fun? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, these blue towels right here, these are what you want to use. Okay? You know what these towels were used for? <laughs> <laughs> you, and you used quite a few of them. It so used, you got... used to clean my truck. <laughs> Let the beating commence. So, you can use... Paper towels, I would not recommend it, but you want to get shop towels. So, um, if you get these, basically all you're going to do, and you can go check out Mama Always, her video on Always New Times. She has a disinfectant wipes um, video. And basically all you do, yeah, you don't want to use paper towels because the paper towels will kind of disintegrate. These shop towels work perfect. So what you do is you just cut these in half. Where did my... Cut it, cut it, because I got no use for it anymore. Well, I'm just wondering where my coffee thing went. She was supposed to bring it out. You had it. I heard you kick it. No, did I? Yep. Yeah. No. Did I drop it? Maybe it's in this bag. Nope, it's not in the bag. I swear I'm losing my mind. Okay. Call her in real quick. Okay, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to cut this in half. And then you'll put it down into um, the coffee can. A plastic coffee can. This is a good way to keep a plastic coffee can out of um, the landfill. A lot of people use them to store. We store rice, a whole bunch of other different things. Come here. <clears throat> Why don't you just tell her? Bring the coffee can. So you cut it in half. The coffee can. You put can. it down into the coffee can. And then. Where is it? Where the thing. Sure? <laughs> and right. then what you'll do is you're going to take two cups of water. And then two teaspoons of fractionated coconut oil. And then this one actually uses three drops of On Guard. And then I think in Mama's um, recipe, she uses like Dawn dish soap. This one you're actually going to use like, you can use um, 
the dish soap. I'm going to use some Castile soap. There we go. Why are you going to steal it? Oh, that's where my other oils were. Can, dish soap. Can you go get us a big thing of hot, of warm water, please? How much? Um, like just a big jug of it. Go get some more water. Like what we normally put the tea in. Yeah, so there's the pot again. So Mama uses Dawn and vinegar in hers. This recipe is just a little bit different. Um, same concept, but you're going to use um, On Guard, which is a protective blend. And it has a lot of stuff that's going to be um, antibacterial, antiseptic. What? On Guard. I knew it. I, I was about to fall for it. Um, so I'm going to use Castile soap um, instead of Dawn. And there's, so there's that. And I'll let you, you can have fun measuring. How about that? Is that fun? I got to put it in here? Catch me outside. How about that? I got to put it in here? Yeah, but hold on. Hold on now. Slow your roll. <laughs> Jason, you got a lid in there too. You got to take the lid off. <laughs> ah, see, so Karen's using On Guard right now because her hubby's been sick. So she's using that. And it does work, y'all. It's a great, great Speaking of being sick, how many of y'all know about the great egg recall? Oh, ooh, ooh. We're not happy about that, are we, honey? I don't care. I mean, we're, yeah, we don't care because we got our, got our stuff situated, but. Over 200 million eggs have been recalled. That's crazy. That's a lot. And there was romaine, romaine lettuce. lettuce. Yeah. So, yeah. And I posted For a salmonella. picture. Salmonella. And e. coli. Yeah, I posted a picture in the Big Bear page about that. We went to Aldi, and Aldi um, had limited their and purchasing. And they're in South and, Carolina, though, yeah. folks in South Carolina and North Carolina. Okay, so we need two tablespoons. So doTERRA has fractionated coconut oil. Fractionated coconut oil, what makes it different than, like, your uh, the coconut oil you get in the jar is this will not solidify it's a liquid form so you'll need liquid form, liquid form. <laughs> there's my girl you're awesome thank you so much liquid form what's up liquid form okay so we need two <coughs> cups of water where's the two cup mark see the two cup mark no i lift it up so everybody can see <laughs> Okay, I think that's two cups. Is that close? Where's the cup? Other side. <laughs> this is my soap measuring. Nope, not quite. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. Is that two cups? Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, that's two cups. So now, does it have to have the dog hair in it? Yes, dog hair is imperative. Is Hold on, let's just, no, we're going to put it there. So then you're going to need two tablespoons. <laughs> you got me all wet. <laughs> Two tablespoons kind of, of fractionated coconut oil. No, it's dripping on me. Well, we'll get over it. Well, if you'd learn how to pour. Well, I'm not a bartender by I trade. Know. Okay, two tablespoons. One. Two tablespoons. Show everybody your fancy measuring thing. I'm a bother. My measure. Oh, see, so yeah, we got this at Walmart. It's pretty cool. It's like, it's silicone. And it has a tablespoon and a half a tablespoon, and then it has a half a teaspoon and a quarter teaspoon on it. So that's pretty cool. All right. Now you need um, On Guard. On Guard! <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Where did the On Guard go? Right here. On Guard. So you take your On Guard, and we want three drops. One, two, three. Woo. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Oh, that smells so good. And then one to two tablespoons of soap. So you take that. Oh, you already took the lid off. <laughs> and I'm going to do two tablespoons of soap. 
Now this Castile soap has lavender in it and that's okay because lavender is also good for cleaning. Are you okay over there? Oh, that smells good. It's lavender. It smells really good. Okay. So. Now wait a minute. You forgot something. What did I forget something? You forgot bat wing. Mm-hmm. And I have three Newt. hairs from a rat. And eye of Newt. Yes. And Ted Nugent's guitar pick. <laughs> okay, so. Probably a whisk would be better, but I don't feel like asking my children to. Can you not spread a lot of water around the computer? There's nothing on there. Relax. Okay, so then, so then what you do is you're going to take, when you cut these up and you put them down in your coffee can, <laughs> bubble boil, <laughs> bubble bubble toilet and trouble, um, you'll cut them in half, put them in there, and then you're going to take, and what we're going to do is, I'm going to go get shop towels after, um, after the show tonight or maybe tomorrow, but all you'll do is when you um, get everything, you'll pour that in. And the best way to do it is to pour it around the paper towels, like pour it into it. And that was a good thing that Mama covers in her um, video, is if you take it and pour it around the top and let it kind of soak in. And then what she does is she takes the lid, puts it on there and flips it over and lets it sit for a little while and then flips it back and then that way the paper towels get completely soaked with the use your big words saturated saturated get completely saturated um and then then you have disinfectant wipes that you can use um you know to clean surfaces with and disinfect them e. Coli. so that's that's one thing you can do um, another one is, ooh, is a powder cleanser. So we won't need the water for the powder cleanser. Great. People on YouTube are going to think you're making anthrax. What? No. <laughs> Every time I hear Leslie say on guard, I imagine swinging a sword being pulled from a sheath. Swing! <laughs> Why are you being a butt face? Why? Like what? You promised me fun. I didn't promise fun. Yes, I don't remember did. saying fun. Yeah. Okay. You don't remember saying a lot of things. I remember saying I do. Yeah. You don't <laughs> remember the stuff you promised before that. I don't remember promising you anything. I'm sorry. Okay. Water. Huh? Okay. <laughs> so this next one, this next one is pretty, um, <laughs> is an Ewok. <laughs> This next one's actually pretty cool too. This is a powder cleanser. And one of the things they tell you is that you can spray distilled vinegar on this. And if you do that, it'll add to the cleaning power of the um, <laughs> time for an evening of Jason doing oil tasting. No, we're not doing that. Because that's not fun. That's a trip to the hospital. Not doing that. Okay, so for a powder cleaner, and this is kind of like comparable to like your Ajax kind of stuff where you would spray it. You I had mean, to say Ajax, didn't you? Why? Ajax is so close to anthrax. Why do you keep saying the word? Like, are you kidding me? I'm saying you know. Yeah, I'm going to uh, 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 you in a minute. Okay. It's the ATF. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this next one is um, a cleanser, a powdered cleanser. And a really cool thing with this is you could take like a regular mason jar um, and then just you could drill some holes in the top of your lid to make it kind of like a shaker, how they do with Ajax. Um, <clears throat> Can I ask a question? Huh? Could you just go to like the Goodwill and buy a old salt shaker? Right. You well, not a salt shaker. What a lot of people um, will use the you know the ones that had the old seasoning holes, like the holes were bigger. Like, um, but the problem is you need something big um, to be able to hold this because it takes you know like three cups of a bunch of powdered stuff, lots and lots of powdered stuff. So the first thing is. Um, 
This is a liquid. I need... Uh, see, we got home late and I got flustered. Let me see if I've got something else liquid and then we'll move on to the... Okay. Let's oh, yeah, it. Parmesan cheese container. Yeah, that's a good one. You could do that one. The other thing I was thinking is you could do like... You know, we always... Um, Whenever we're sick, we go through Pringles cans. And so I was thinking Pringles cans you could do, but the problem I worry about is the inside, what's on the inside of those. The innards. Yeah. Um, but a Parmesan cheese shaker would work because that's the plastic. Well, you would, I would get the plastic one, um, not the, the other stuff. But, um, okay, let's do, this one is a, a soft scrub. Let's do a soft scrub cleaner. And, um, and then can you tell Dessa that I need the, the measuring cup, like the dry measuring cup? Well, I'm sorry. I'm interrupting your popcorn eating. <laughs> okay. So for the soft scrub cleaner, you need three quarters of a cup of baking soda, which she'll get us in just a second. I need half a cup of Castile, and this is another cool thing. Hey, Daddy. Um, the Castile hey, soap, you can use this with your oils interchangeably for cleaner constantly. It's a good um, thing to use. No, it's unsweet tea. That's not. It is too. Okay, quarter cup. Quarter cup of Castile soap. Okay. So, quarter cup of Castile. Okay. Yes. Tablespoon of water. Um, can I get the dry, the measuring cup? I need just the cup, measuring cup one. Hmm? The glass one. Not the glass. No, no, that's a liquid. I need like the scoop. Oh. That's yes, really there is a difference. Did you not know this, honey? You didn't know? There's liquid measuring and there's... I know I was promised fun. I know I'm going to promise you to go out into the shop for the rest of the night. <laughs> yeah, like you let me spend all night out there. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Um be there five minutes. <laughs> I want to cuddle. Uh, no. Mm -mm. I need vinegar too. I forgot about the vinegar. It's all the way over here. Oh, step on my popcorn. I'm going to kick your popcorn. Well, you're the one who put it down. Way there. across into the pond. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Hope is cooking. She's at her new place with no air conditioning, apparently. I, I bet she's having fun. Can you have fun and open that up? Was that fun? <laughs> Jason, you're going to be sleeping with the chickens. <laughs> Did it open it? It came out. <laughs> See, that's what you get. Uh, okay, so that for the... Um... <laughs> So for the soft scrub cleaner, so far <coughs> we've put in. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Did you get a mouthful of vinegar? No, I got a Just a nose full. <laughs> <coughs> okay, can you pour pour that for me? Pour a, a tablespoon. So so far we've put in a quarter of a cup of Castile soap, a tablespoon of water, this is gonna and we're gonna do a tablespoon of vinegar. That's good. That's good. Okay, tablespoon of vinegar. Woo! Look at that. What? Look at what? Oh. Mm-hmm. What did Daddy do? Okay. And we need. Did you just drink vinegar? Yeah. You want some? Sure. Oh no 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 no. Here. No no no. Good. All right. Wait wait wait. Mm -mm. Ugh. Mm. Okay, three quarters of a cup of baking soda. Now, since I got 
a cup, I'm gonna do three quarters of a cup. <coughs> okay. Ooh, it's a little Bernie. <laughs> a little Bernie? Mm hmm. Mm, okay. All right, so baking soda. And then. <laughs> okay, and then you can do five to, drop, five to ten drops of lemon. Or you can do lemon and lime. And that's the one that I want to do is the lemon and lime. Does that sound good? Excuse me. What? Excuse me. Those are both citruses. Yes. And you said we can't put citruses in plastic. I didn't put them in plastic. But you said we could use a um, Parmesan. Yeah, you probably don't want to do that. That's a good point, <clears throat> Jason. I'm glad you've been listening. So, if you're doing the lemon and the lime, it's eight lemon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lemon. And five lime. I see the lemon. Mm hmm Five lime. Yes, I'll put the recipes up later. One, two, three, four, five lime. So, yeah, that's what she was saying. You could get like the bar, like the ones that you get at the restaurant. You know how it was the old with the shaker? Oh. Yeah, that's what she's talking about. Oh, okay. See, so then, I know Mama's smart. So then this just has to be mixed up real good. And this is a soft scrub cleaner that you can use. Um, put the lime into coconut. So Kitty says she likes doing orange and lemon. Yeah, so you shake it all up. And then you have a nice soft scrub cleaner that you can put down on a surface, let it sit for a second, and then come back and wipe it up. Don't suck. <laughs> she said don't suck up because you didn't listen today. So anyway, that's pretty cool because, woo, you made it all foamy looking. Look at that. That is so cool. I don't know if y'all can see that. But look, it's all foamy on the inside. I made it foamy, baby. So, lemon and lavender is good. Now, like I said, this this Castile soap had lavender in it. So, it's got the lavender already and then lemon and lime. So, smell it. Does it smell good? Oh, it smells really good. Smell it. That's nice and clean. You can definitely smell the lime and the lemon and definitely the lavender. So, anyway, we're going to use this during the week and we'll let you know just how well it cleans. Okay, so what's wrong, baby? Okay, so another nice uh, one to do, we'll go back now that I've got my um, dry measuring cup. Um, let's go back to, what are you doing? Uh, okay, so the powdered, so there's a, a powdered cleanser. Uh-oh, this has a vinegar in it. This has a vinegar. Did you piss it? So I'm going to put, I'm going to put that in there. I'm not going to drink that. Let's see what happens with vinegar and tea. It Ooh. is close. Okay, so the next one is the powdered cleanser. And this one is the one that we were talking about you could put in the shaker, not this one. The one that we just did has the citrus in it, so that one you wouldn't put in the shaker. This okay. next one, though, it does have the citrus in it, so it's still going to be a good I point. for being smart. Good job. Okay, so this next we one's a power. Um, we probably will in a minute. If you want to put it down by you, you could. Okay, I need another. Oh, give it to me, and I'll put it over here because I got to. I gotta get another jar. Okay. So the next one's a powder huh. cleaner. What? Ducks on the pond. Oh, yay. Okay. Ooh, that's water. Okay. Alright. So the next one is the powdered cleanser. This one's gonna be two cups of Be safe, Josh. Borax. We love you, man. Oh, oof, oof. Okay, so two cups of borax, and most of y'all make your own laundry detergent anyways, so a lot of people already have borax on hand. So this is two cups of borax. Why would they have borax on their hands? <sighs> You're such a dork. But well, you I said, you. I said, you said on hand, not no, on you your said hands. On their hands. 
No, I didn't. I yes, said on did. hand. Okay. What you heard, what you said, and what we heard. True talk. Oh, about. okay. <laughs> okay, so you can do two cups of borax, and of course, I'm making a huge mess because that's what we do here at the Big Bear Homestead. Lots of messes. My funnel. Where did my funnel go? I had a funnel. It's right there. No, but it's not going to let that pass through there. That doesn't do any good. This is for my liquids. That's the only funnel you brought out here. I know. I meant. Dark Aramis. Okay, so this one you definitely need a bigger jar for because it takes... It looks like we need a bigger boat. No, we'll be okay with what we're getting. We're, we're using it for but so you're gonna do two things of borax get the last little bit of it off of my paper there what you're gonna have a nice clean desk i'm just saying when it's all said and done okay and um a cup of baking soda which is right here cup of baking soda it is hot in here. I'm taking off all my clothes. <laughs> okay, so cup of baking soda. This one, mid, this one goes in a lot better than the borax. That's why I didn't feel like I needed it, but I forgot I was using borax today. Okay, now this is where it gets fun. Citric acid. Oh yeah. Citric acid. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know what citric acid is, it's the stuff that. Well, I mean, you can use it for a lot of different things for preser for per per preserving stuff, but it's also, if you don't know, <laughs> I got Sour it. Patch Kids. The stuff that's on Sour Patch Kids is that. Lick your finger. Challenge for the millennial children. <laughs> a teaspoon of citric acid. Whew. Snort it. Oh no. Why aren't they snorting condoms? I don't know. Okay, so citric acid. Oh, so she uses it when she's dying yarn and rubbings. That's awesome. Okay, half a cup of kosher salt. I've got sea, uh, sea salt. You just want something that's got the bigger, um, the coarse. coarse texture to it. <laughs> nope, he still hasn't learned, y'all. <laughs> He's never gonna learn. Dave Jeffrey sums it up best. What did he say? Oh, we are men. Oh, we are men. We do dumb things. Yep. <laughs> oh, but we still love you. Okay, so all of these powders go ahead and and mix them all together before you put your oils in okay now <clears throat> with this one if you put do your oils and then store it and then what you can do is when you're ready to use it <clears throat> it's like cocktail. Mm -hmm. you can oh, use it as a pat as your powdered cleaner but then take a spray of um, distilled vinegar and when you hit that vinegar to the citric acid, it'll go pssst. No. It's pretty cool, yeah. It is pretty cool. No, man. Okay, so with this one, though, you need 20 drops of lemon. 20 drops of lemon. I'm going to use the smaller one. Okay. How many people are named Darren? Oh, there's two at least. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I always get one more. Okay. So, shaky, shaky, mm -hmm. eggs and bakey. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> uh, okay, so open that up and let's see how it. I bet it smells pretty good. I didn't shake it enough for you. No, I want to shake it some more. Shake it, shake it. <laughs> Smells pretty good. So this is a powdered cleanser that you can keep stored. And if you keep it in glass. I'm going to tell Blaze it's sugar. No, you're not. Not cool. Because it's got borax in it, honey. You don't and? That. Okay. So that's two I cleaners. I don't have a truck. <laughs> Somebody calling you? No. No voicemails. That's from before. I ignore people. Okay. Um... Now, why does mom say call doctor? Doctor who? Call doctor. I don't know. Okay. So the next one that I'm looking forward to using, and we're going to use it tonight. So be looking for pictures of this one tomorrow. This is a do-it-yourself dish soap. And this is just Castile soap, but then it's lemon, lime, and citrus. Bliss. Uh, Jason, the song. Okay. Okay. So. So. This one. This one. Is. Is. Two cups of Castile soap. Two cups of Castile soap. That might be almost the rest of my bottle. Might have to go buy some more. Yep, that's the rest of my bottle. I hope I don't have any more with Castile soap. <laughs> okay. Okay. Put that in there. Put this in the air. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we need... Seriously not a fan of lemon, but it's the oil I'm using the most of. I know, right? Okay. Okay. Lime, you Lime. need 20 drops. 20 drops. 1, 1 2, 2 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 11, 12, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Always want extra. <laughs> okay, 8 lemon. 8 lemon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and then 6 citrus bliss. Which is this one right here. Okay. And then what you do with these is it's just one to two tablespoons to for your water. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So stop at nineteen. At nineteen you'll get twenty. No, that's no fun. <laughs> okay. So with this one Mel That's from uh, aloha quills. That's oh. the wife. That's the wife. Hello, uh, aloha. Okay, so this is dish soap. So we're going to try this and see how it works. Okay. Don't shake it too much because look at what happens when you... Okay, so now it's going to be useless because you've just turned it into a bunch of fuzz. It'll settle back down. Okay, so that's done that's dish soap now another one you can do since we don't have our castile soap we'll cover those again next week but you can also make a, a glass cleaner out of that um with mostly vinegar so it's one and a half cups of vinegar then a half a cup of castile i'm sorry not castile i messed up because i'm looking at my notes and it says i have the l's and everything mixed up i'm sorry with the glass cleaner that one, um, you're going to do one and a half cups of vinegar, then a half a cup of distilled water, which I have it in the house if I could get it. And then it's six, uh, eight drops of any citrus oil. So if you want to do, if you want to do uh, lemon, you could do lime, you could do orange, you could do citrus bliss. Any of those would be good for a glass cleaner. So that's a very practical, like if you don't have any Windex, um, I know vinegar does a really good job by itself. Do I would be interested to see cooking? if 
anybody has done this before with the vinegar, the distilled water, and the oil. Because part of me thinks putting oil on glass might not necessarily work. So, <clears throat> there's a, I'm, I'm issuing a challenge, dropping a challenge. Somebody make glass cleaner this week using this recipe. One and a half cups of water, I mean of vinegar, a half a cup of distilled water, and eight drops of citrus oil. And tell me how it works. Tell me if it does a good job or if it leaves streaks or whatever. What do you they think? call in the street. So we'll see how that one goes. <clears throat> they go to feed. Boogity, boogity. Okay. <clears throat> Another good one. Microwave or... Likes to show off his physique. Yeah? <laughs> Microsoft, uh, Microsoft. Microwave or refrigerator <laughs> cleaner. Um, with this one... And this is another one that we can use um, pretty well. All right, let's do that one. One more jar. One more jar. Yeah, one more jar. Okay. One more jar. So with this one, um, it's just vinegar, water, and oh. lemon. What? Kitty says she thinks the vinegar breaks, breaks the, the oil. oil. Huh. Okay. So I told you Kitty was smart. Mm-hmm. Looks like I need to place citrus on my list of oil. Yes, absolutely. They're very good for cleaning. I mean, you know, they're good for flavor, too. I mean, the lime's very good for cooking with. Um, it's very potent, though. You want to make sure that you don't, like, put a whole bunch because it will... You got a lot of detention in school, didn't you? <laughs> like, you s probably, like, had a reserved spot in the principal's office, didn't you? Yeah, you did. I had my own desk. <laughs> had your own desk. See, that's it. Are these recipes going into your book? Yes, they are. I'm going to put these recipes in my book as well. Um, so, this one is, we're going to do... Yeah, we'll do the, um, no, let's not do, we won't do, so the microwave and fridge cleaner, I don't know how many people do their, um, <laughs> it does break down after two weeks the sh that it streaks bad. Is that what he's saying? I think, yes, yes. So, yeah, so I would try it just to see. the. And as far as microwave refrigerator cleaner, this one to me is just like an overall surface kind of cleaner. It's a cup of vinegar, two cups of water, and 15 drops of lemon. And as we were talking about, the lemon is really good for a degreaser and an overall cleaner. So that's why this works out really well. It's good for wiping down your microwave, wiping down the inside of your fridge, you know, all that gunk that gets you know, caked on your fridge, something leaks, and next thing you know, you have a big puddle of something somewhere. Um, okay, so another cool one, and this I thought you could use. Um, it's a leather polish. Do I have your attention I'm at all? Mm -hmm. The moment you started playing with my thigh, you had my attention. <laughs> You're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me, Smalls. So, the leather polish is regular coconut oil, um, not the fractionated. Um, That's good because I don't like fractions. I don't like them either. I'm not really good with them. I could never, I could never add, subtract, multiply, divide fractions. <laughs> so it's a quarter of a cup. I find the common denominator was always a pain in the butt. Quarter cup of coconut oil, a quarter cup of vinegar, and five to ten drops of eucalyptus oil. So again, that's another one that I think would be very useful, but I'd like to try it out on something before I just throw it on my leather couch or something like that. I would spot test it just to make sure that it works. Why do you want to test it on spot? What did he do to you? Now, another one that we're going to try out here. See, you got Peter on our door. That's the whole reason why they um, people was testing stuff on animals and you want to test it on poor spot. <laughs> uh, poor dog ain't never done none of you. <laughs> okay, 
So another one is. ATF and peanut. I'm just gonna have an alphabet <laughs> soup in my house. Let me tell you. <laughs> You're killing me. <sighs> I don't have anything to. Yeah, I guess I do. To what? Stab me with? No, I'm trying to mark down the ones that we've done so I can go back and. Okay, so another one that we're gonna try this week, um, and I'll probably do like a small video on it, um, is a wood polish. Okay, can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. Why do you want the video to be small? Because I don't want it to be a big, long, in-depth video. I just want it to be like, you know, a couple minutes. So, so this one is a wood polish. Now, in the past, we've used... Um, beeswax. Yeah, beeswax and an oil and then... Um, and that was pretty much it. This one we're going to use um, olive oil, vinegar, and then um, I want to use Arbor Vitae. And the reason why is because, what what are they doing? On there? the pond, it goes, the, the goose. <laughs> you need to start drinking. Huh. How soon before the books are done? Oh. My book is almost done. No, it's not. It's got to be edited. Yeah. I'm waiting on you. Yeah, I know. My book's about halfway written. It's still, I've still got, I've still got a little bit. And the, the problem is, is that I keep running into, I go to sit down to work on it. No, don't lie. No. What? That's not the problem. The problem is, is when you start, because you teach these classes, you learn more about a different oil and you're like, crap. And then you want to put that oil in your top 10. <laughs> Yeah, I already have to amend it and put Kapiva in there somewhere. See? I think I'm going to do like an after. <laughs> like, That's oops. a whole other book. Yeah. So, um, Here's the other top ten oils that I wanted to put in the book. Yeah. So that is part of it is that I keep I keep rewriting some stuff. So make it the top 15. There you go. <laughs> I could add four more. No, then it'll take that much longer to write. Um so, but yeah, I, every time I go to sit down to do it, I start rethinking like, you know, it, are these the ones that I still want to keep using? And you, and with the exception of Capiva, they really still are. So it's kind of one of those things where Capiva kind You've of You've changed us. the top 10 like seven times. Why not just do a big book of the top 20? Uh, if I do that, it's going to be a while. But no, you, no, that would probably be your best. About 20? Yeah, maybe. Somewhere around in there. Because you keep freaking changing. Yeah. So. And then you get all frustrated and then you take it out on me. No, I never take it out on you. So, um, hey, okay, so now everybody's saying I should do 20. Okay. Well, we'll, I'll toss that around. So, wood polish. Um, Double the price of the book. Quarter of a cup of olive oil. A quarter of a cup of vinegar. Excuse me. How are you going to get a. You said a quarter of a cup of olive oil? Uh-huh. How are you going to get that away from Popeye? I don't know. I mean, I have to cut her into fourths and she get the top half, I guess. I don't know. Ain't much to her. <laughs> um, and then 10 drops of either wild orange, lemon, or Arbor Vitae. And what I was saying before is we're going to use Arbor Vitae. One, because it has a really cool kind of smell. But on top of that, um, it's actually... Um, <clears throat> It's really good for keeping away termites um, and a bunch of other bugs that will start to eat away at... Termites don't go after leather. Wood. I'm on wood. Wood polisher. We already did. I, I already talked about the leather. <laughs> so, um, so the wood polish, I, we're going to try it with the oil and the vinegar. Yeah, for rabbit. Um, so it, it looks like it would be very, very good. What we did before with the polish that we used before, it was, um, beeswax and then a little bit of, um, coconut oil. We mixed that all together and then, um, you could put some essential oils in there as well, um, would be pretty good as far as treating the wood and also giving it a nice smell. So... Um, okay, so another one, and this is one that we, we don't have a garbage disposal. Yeah, we do. It's called Dessa. It's called a pig. Dessa just eat all over the neighborhood. But for people who do have garbage disposals, this is one I wanted to include because I thought this was really a cool, um, concept. 
but you have to let this dry for 24 hours. And the reason why I'm, I'm thinking of this one is that we just recently, I don't know how many people have been to Walmart lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, well, yeah, you don't want to use it on cedar because you'll, right. See, all the stuff we have has already been sealed. And no, not with cedar has it. Uh, we don't have a cedar, we don't have any cedar furniture. Well, you would if you let me buy that chainsaw. So, um, so we've been to Walmart recently and they're starting all of the summer party stuff is coming out. So one of the things that we've seen a lot of is the themed um, silicone ice cube trays. Right? So you picked up all those. And remember, I was like, I wonder what... And I was like, I wonder what we could use this for. I wonder what we could use this for. Well, We're now... We're going to make some candy. Yeah, we are going to make some candies. We're so, going to make some candy. <laughs> so Karina says orange oil and is a great... You can have it. Orange is a great degreaser. And really gets rid of finger, etc. marks on wood and helps preserve it. I'm so that's candy to mommy. So that's another. Uh, that's why they tell you wild orange oil, lemon oil is good too. Josh and, can't have any candy either. And that other one, Arborvitae. Where's the towel that we have? Oh, it's right here. Because he always this is puts driving. crazy songs to my. He always face. gets them stuck in your head. He's yeah, starting to yeah. do it to me I too. Am a man. Now you're gonna have everybody thinking Black Betty now. Hey, Black Betty, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, so this garbage disposal um, refresher basically, what you do is you make this pod and then you put it down in your garbage disposal and chop it up and it gets down into your disposal and kind of freshens everything up. Lemony fresh. And it has two cups of baking soda, a cup of salt. A half a cup of water, a quarter cup of Castile soap, and then 15 drops of tangerine or wild orange, and then 15 drops of spearmint. And so you take those, what? Keep going, and I'll say what I'm going to say afterwards. I don't think this is a good idea. Why? Because you said salt. Mm-hmm. And what else? Baking soda. Baking soda. Water. Soap, a little bit well, of soap. I'm, I'm worried about the, what the damage the salt would do to the blades. It's table salt, not... It doesn't matter, salt is salt. What do you mean it would do to the blades? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to run your water through it and rinse everything off. But so it's abrasive. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. To help get all the gunk that gets down in there. I mean, I don't... Flush everything out. I don't know. I guess it would be okay because people put salt on their food. Yeah. You so... You that down the garbage disposal. But why would you have a garbage disposal? I don't know. Like Todd Pa. <laughs> Cleans the system. Yup. So, basically what you do is you add all of this stuff together. You put all the dry stuff together first. So, two cups of baking soda, a cup of salt. And then you add in um, your quarter cup of Castile soap, the half a cup of water, and your oils. You mix it all together and then you take it just like how we did the laundry pods. You take those and put them in the silicone. Um, you do know you're not supposed to put bones down your garbage disposal. So then you take and put the mixture into these silicone um, forms. You can do you know, little mini cupcakes or the ice cube trays, whatever. Put them down in there, pack them in real good, and let them dry overnight for at least 24 hours. And then they'll solidify, they'll dry, and you can take one, pop it out, put it in the disposal, chop it up in there, rinse it out, and it helps to refresh you know and so it doesn't keep having that yeah. sometimes you get that smell i mean i, I like it's a great yeah. idea to help clean everything clean everything out it's just i worry about what it could do to the blades i think it would be okay i think it's such a small concentrate i mean when you think about it two cups of baking soda and a cup of salt i mean it's like that much and you're putting you know i mean yeah, that's true that's true it, when it all gets mixed that's together true. i don't think it's gonna be as bad so 
salt water could rust the metal, but the blades are usually stainless steel. See, that's what I was I was thinking they were would be that's steel. That's a good question. I mean, it might be good for the drains. Just for too. the drains. Yeah, as far as a refresher, the only thing is, though, is that this is, it solidifies, so I guess. Well, I mean, if you want to pour it down the drain before it solidifies. You just mix it all together and just pour it down it, there. It yeah, I guess you could do that. that. Yeah, you probably could. Um, the only thing I worry about, though, is... Your PVC with the exposure to the oil over time. I mean, I guess over time. No, because it's going to flush, flush it, it right good. on down. Yeah, so just hot water. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good thing to try. We could, I mean, we could try that and see how it works. Um, if I had more Castile soap, I would do it. <laughs> but i got to go get more Castile soap. Um, so those are just a few of the applications. The other stuff that we're going to do next week all of those are going to feature um, a different oil blend. And we're going to make a bunch of fun stuff. And I promise next week I'll be a little bit more prepared. You, you heard her. She said we're going to make fun stuff. Well, it's going to be good. No, for... no. You said fun. Okay. I said fun. So those, all of those um, next week will all be featured under the same oil. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you now... So that if anybody wants to order it this week, so that they'll have it for next week's stuff, um, it might be something that you um, would be interested in. It's Purify. It's a bl it's the cleansing blend, um, and it has a lot of really good potent oils in it um, as a blend. So. <laughs> Keep Oopsie. your fingers out of the disposal. It won't cut your finger bones, LOL. Why waste the chicken bones? Make broth. There Amen. you go. There you go. Amen. Um, Amen. So, just to give you an idea, we're, there's a lot of different stuff next week that um, we're going to make some pods. And I'm going to probably make those this week so that we'll have them to show for next week. Um... So that I'm pretty excited about. What? Uh, we just won't call it do-it-yourself pods <laughs> next week. <laughs> and be looking for pictures um, on all of the different, you know, uses, all the things that we use. And I would love to see people tag us in some of the stuff that they've used over the week. Um, you know, to be able laundry cubes. There you go. I could call them laundry cubes. That would work. Then maybe I wouldn't get demonetized. Uh oh, now Jason, you're going to hate me for the next song I get stuck. Uh oh. Keep it up as soon as I figure out how I can tag you. I don't want for He that. doesn't see, he doesn't play fair because you can't tag Josh in anything. Josh has his settings set up on Facebook so that you can't tag him in stuff. He plays dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Anyway, so that was, that was, I, I was going to do them all at one time, but basically what ended up happening is all of the oils that I ordered, they didn't come in time. So they'll be here beginning of this week. So I'll be able to use them for next week for class. So we'll break it up into that. So what I was going to do is the second, I don't know why y'all can't. There is some kind of setting on your Facebook that does not allow anybody to tag you in anything. Does anybody else have that problem? Can anybody else tag Josh and stuff? Because I know I can't. <laughs> Okay, so what I was going to do, we've got a little bit, just about an hour left. And I figured we would just open it up just like how we did last week. We were talking about some different oils and what people use them for. Do you want your book? You don't want your book? Okay. Does anybody have a book? Um, I mean a book. Does anybody have an oil that they like to use that we didn't talk about last week? that may have, um, yeah. No, I didn't hear about that. What? Season finale. 
know what? that um, the drill instructor for Full Metal Jacket died today. Oh. Well, that's not, not good. But he was an older gentleman, though, wasn't he? It's not like he was a ripe young buck. Don't forget to post the recipes. I will not. I will do that as soon as... Um, as soon as we get out of here and I get back to my comfy spot, I'll do it. I've got them all written here in my notebook. I'll transfer them over into the notes on the class. So you'll have all the different cleaners. So does anybody have any oils? So... Was it a heart attack or? He was an old guy. Natural causes or? He was old. He wasn't that old. Yes, he was. We need, need the family recipes. Um, we need them. This week. Uh, I need them before, the, by, by the end of, close of business Friday. Complications from pneumonia. Mm. That sucks. Okay. Um, so that is one thing we'll bring it up because we kind of forgot to bring it up yesterday and some of the people had already left when we were talking about it. Um, next week, this week coming, we're doing Greek food. So that's already been planned out for the week. However, the following week... We are going to do, um, basically a, a mixture. Yes, hummus is Greek. See, no, hummus. hummus I'm Jewish. eating hummus. So, the following, <coughs> the following week, we're going to ask everybody to submit recipes well, from their family. Well, they have to family. submit them this week. Right, this week. <clears throat> Between now and Friday evening, because Carol and I <laughs> will make <laughs> the menu on Saturday morning. Some liver and heart and kidneys just packed into the stomach. Get in there, get in there, get in there. Boil it up. Do you need one or can it be more? I mean, you can submit as many as you'd like. Yeah. Um, we're just going to, from those, we'll pick the ones that we're going to use for the week. And remember, if yours gets picked, not only are we going to be doing a video on it, but it'll also be in our cookbook and you get a free Big Bear t-shirt. Mm -hmm. We might even design a special shirt. This one. I don't know what you think. Mm -mm. I don't know why not. Okay. Any recipe or from a certain country? Any. Any recipe. I would like to have. Stuff that's regional, like, for instance, if you're from Louisiana and you do a really, um, it'll have like, you know, if you have jambalaya or you have etouffee or something like that, um, you know, that kind of thing, um, that would be more desirable, but if you have, you know, just a family recipe that you want to pass down or something like that, we'll do that too. For haggis? Mm-mm. No haggis, no bueno. Mm-hmm. You know you're going to get like seven of them. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. No haggis. I have German recipes that have been in my family for over 100 years. That would be awesome. Send them. Hmm. <laughs> Karina says, I just touch anything electrical and I have to call the fire department. <laughs> mm. 
Sorry, it's out of my system now. <laughs> Speaking of haggis, looks who showed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. How about a Hawaiian dish? But Definitely. Love it. love it. Absolutely. Just keep in mind, I have to be able to get whatever it is, you know, ingredient-wise, what we would need. That's the only thing. Is just keep in mind, we're here in Georgia. Um, yes, it can be any type of recipe. Wild game. Well, but we don't, I mean, we don't have any deer in the freezer right now. No, I mean, one could accidentally trip over my gun and fall on the bullet. Hmm, wild boar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure we got some of that in the freezer. If not, it won't be hard to get. No, they're all over the place around here. Huh, clear his throat. <laughs> hmm. You can say the deer was attacking you. I don't know, with the size of the deer here in Georgia, especially right now, you probably wouldn't even have a full meal. <laughs> yes, I went there. Okay. Hmm. Oh. Message me about deer. I was going to message you about it. Just have not remembered. Oh. Hey, Maria. Okay, I want to read this. I did not miss it. I just didn't get a chance to read it earlier. Michelle posted earlier, she said, I like to mix vetiver, cedarwood, balance, lavender, and frankincense for ADD. Michelle, have you tried peace? It's peace, right? No, you can move on. I got ADD. No, but peace has a bunch of those... Um, is that Maria from down mm -hmm, there? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so cool. Hi, Maria. Will you be doing any of your own original recipes? You talking about for the food? Yes. For next week? Will we be doing any of our own? No. We do that every week. Peace, the Peace Rollerball is really, really good for that. Um... Peace works. Also, focus. I'm gonna roll on. I bet uh, that's really good. It was. It's been a lifesaver. Yeah, I bet that would be really good. <clears throat> Those clumsy deer always falling down over things. <laughs> Karina says I only have two packs of deer meat left in the freezer. I hope to trip on one soon. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, in tune is also a good one as well um, for ADD. That and balance. Put in tune across the back, and then balance on the feet. I always like it when people sing in tune. Yeah. Sounds nicer. <laughs> so, how many people use cedar wood? Anytime I can find it cheap, I use it all the time. Yeah. I like to build stuff out of it. Cedarwood oil, honey. I'm going to build you a hope chest. Out of cedarwood? Yeah, that way maybe you can go to sleep and hope that one day your husband mm -hmm. will be good looking when you wake up. David says just hit one with a vehicle. <laughs> just let him trip over the cracked corn pile. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, you could do that. Mama says she uses cedarwood. Ow! I know Mama uses it. Ah, uh, no. Besides lavender, what can I use to defrat in the diffuser to distress me? Rum. <laughs> it's mm. called a belt. Cedar wood is good. Um, definitely for stress and anxiety. We use cedar wood a lot around here. One of the things that we use it for that was not something that you just normally... Um, I don't normally think to use cedar wood for this, but my hiccups. Yeah, but Jason started having hiccups one day and could not find the peppermint anywhere, and so he just grabbed the 
closest one that was around and it just happened it to was, be it was <laughs> when i had wood. my truck yeah when you had your truck the it cedar was wood was the truck. only other oil that was in the truck <laughs> and so i grabbed it and huffed it <laughs> and that was a better mm-hmm and i told him later down the road the reason why that worked is because it was an anti-spasmodic i was spazzing too boy mm -hmm. i was like nah, nah, nah. Mm -hmm. so put a needle in a thread Mm -hmm. Speaking of sewing with a needle Speaking and thread. Speaking of sewing with a needle and thread. What did we get today? Needle and thread. Yep. We got. Do uh, you have any oil combinations to repel fleas and ticks? Where is Kitty? Kitty's got one for fleas that she uses. I would think Arbor Vitae would work. Cedarwood would work. Miona. Me and the little turd already talked things out. <laughs> yeah, nice well, out. cedar would help with cramps. Um, yeah. Probably not as good. Well, you're as probably low on potassium, so you probably need to eat a banana. That'll help with cramps. Water. Drink lots of water. Geranium for fleas. That would make sense. Geranium would be a good one. Yeah. Arbor Vitae would be a good one. Jason, you built a compost a while back. How's it working for you? Which one? You talking about the three-tier one? Are you talking about the worm composter? Yeah, Are you we've talking got about quite the tire composter. Mm -hmm. We just emptied them all out and threw them on the garden and tilled it all in. Mm -hmm. So, and we expanded the garden this year, which is very cool because <clears throat> you can see where we've been gardening, the color of the dirt versus the color of the dirt of the new area that we added on. The three tier one I like a lot. I think that's becoming my favorite one. Why? One, it's a lot easier to maintain. Mm. I literally take my dried leaves, my brown, mm -hmm. I throw it in there, mm -hmm. and then I ride around with my riding lawnmower, get a bunch of grass. Grass, yeah. I throw it in there. I'll grab some cow manure, some chicken manure. I'll throw it in there, and I leave it alone. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come back in a month, two months, three months, and it'll be lower, and I'll take my um, sleeves out, and then I move it into the second one, mm -hmm. and bam, then I leave it, I put everything back on it, I put some uh, the top back on it, to stop stuff from blowing out, then I leave it alone. We've made a lot of compost. And then I can start that one over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have... Um, and like in the summertime, really, I don't even wait that long in the summertime. Mm -hmm. I may wait two or three weeks, and then I'll turn it into mm -hmm. the, second the second one. one. And there, it'll sit for a while, a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And then right about this time the summer's over, we're talking, at least here, we're talking November, mm -hmm. December time frame. I flip it into the last one, and it's good to go. Mm -hmm. And we pull it out and throw it on the garden. Yep. Or if it looks really good, I don't even put it in the third one. I'll go ahead and put it in a drum, mm -hmm. put it off to the side, and wait. And then when springtime comes around, that's what we go to first for the to top dress raised beds and top dress the garden. Yeah. Yeah. It it's worked out really well for us. Where with the compost tumbler... Now, I like that one too. I throw my leaves in there. I throw a bunch of cow manure in there. And I throw the grass in there. And I fill it all the way up. But there's more maintenance to that. I have to go out there every day. Spin it. Spin it. And usually what I'm doing is I'll have a cup of coffee. Because the, keeping the moisture level on the compost tumbler is tough. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side of that one, you can take two five-gallon buckets and mm -hmm. on the, the breathing holes that on they the call, them, mm -hmm. call them, that's on the lid, 
you spin that around to where that's straight upside down. You put them two five-gallon buckets underneath of it. Compost and you get your compost tea. tea. So every morning I'm usually out there with my cup of coffee. I'll spin it and I'll have maybe a quarter of a cup to a half a cup of coffee. And I'll toss that in there to help with the moisture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then keep on going. Now, the big claim to fame with the compost tumbler was that you could have good compost in 14 days. I call bullshit <laughs> um, because it takes anywhere from 21 to 40 days to have decent usable compost. Mm -hmm. And that's turning it every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So that, yeah. But you know what, what really made the best compost for us this year? Tires. That, that it looked better. Hmm. Um, but again, it took a whole freaking year. It was the tires? Tires. I, I knew you were going to say that. So I don't know why, and I'm not sure if it's because. And this is just my my theory on this. I think Ladessa favors going over to the tires because they're shorter than her, so she can just go over to them and dump them in. When she has to go over to the um the piles you know your tears mm -hmm. she sometimes she has to go up higher with that and then with the compost tumbler same thing she has to come up higher with her container each day whereas with the the tires she just dumps it straight down into them but i'm gonna be honest with you we are going to to do something new this year okay and see and this is where things get get hard with us and this is and this is the whole reason why i brought up in our family meeting today about a composting toilet mm -hmm. putting a couple of composting toilets on the property on the property because having the material to make all the compost is rough mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. because we like to have our chickens follow our cows i was just so, gonna say because they're starting to spread everything so, around so they spread all the cow poo mm -hmm. all over so we can't go around and collect that between the cows and the chickens and the, gonna be the turkeys mm -hmm. and everything else we don't have a lot of grass to cut. Mm -mm. I'm literally cutting the neighbor's grass to get grass mm -hmm. to put into my compost. Now, once the season starts up, we can ride by and grab people's bags of clippings because yeah. there are people that... But see, I don't like doing that because you don't know what people in these fancy neighborhoods spray on the fruit. But we just won't go to fancy home. neighborhoods. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm almost to the point where I may start going to people and say, hey, pay me $5 and I'll cut your lawn, but I get to keep the grass. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the $5 would cover my gas and my riding lawnmower. Right, and your riding lawnmower, right. <clears throat> but we're going to do something new that's really going to put a heart, our hurting on our compost tumbler, our three tier in the tires. And I learned this from MI Gardener. Mm hmm. You know, I'm kind of upset with him right now. Um, and it, I mean, it's not really him. It's whoever is packaging his seeds. Um, but he has a very cool and you... I've never seen it anywhere. And that's what makes it so stinking awesome. Mm -hmm. A unique way to bring vermicompost straight into your raised beds. Mm -hmm. We've got some of them made already but we're going to do a video on making it he showed you how to do it and he turned a big 55 gallon drum mm -hmm. into a huge uh, composting. a composting garden uh, i think he, he was pulling looking like pulling a hundred or some, a certain amount of poundage of food and stuff off of it mm -hmm. but what caught my eye made me watch the videos is because we've got the same um Drums. I was like, well, what's this dude going to be doing with these drums? And uh, and for some reason, I don't know why, I always mm. thought that my gardener was like this super old cranky dude. That's why I never really watched That's him. old Alabama gardener. No. Well, <laughs> old Alabama gardener's not cranky. Oh, he's I mean, old. He's old, <laughs> but he's not cranky. cranky. Mm. I don't know why I thought my gardener was just this super old cranky dude. But that's Okay, so he said seeing him with a refrigerator. We've done a uh, freezer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> was my video you saw, Josh. Um, but he's taking like four to six to eight inch PVC pipes, some type mm -hmm. of, a, whether it's a sewer pipe, PVC pipe, mm -hmm. whatever. 
And then he's going down about the bottom, and he's having it anywhere from a, I think it's like a foot, to two foot. I think I think we did ours at 18 inches. Mm -hmm. And for the first, from the bottom, all the way up, like six inches, mm -hmm. all the way around it, we sporadically drilled half inch holes. Mm -hmm. All the way around. <clears throat> then you take some compost. Or you place it in into the, the into the um, raised bed, mm -hmm. and then you um, put some, put a good layer of compost in there. Mm -hmm. Then you go get you some like red wigglers, some Whatever good the, yeah. aggressive type worms, mm -hmm. and you put that whole container of worms in there. You can go to to a little bait shop and get a uh, jug of worms for like a buck, mm -hmm. two bucks, and you put that in there, mm -hmm. and then you put a little bit of compost on top not much but then you start taking your materials that you want to compost your mm -hmm. banana peels mm -hmm. anything but citrus and you put it in there now what he's doing was like boom. he's running that stuff through a blender to help break it down even more when he, I think he may add a little bit of water to it. But so before he puts it in the composting tube, he goes ahead and blends it up first, and then yeah. puts it in there. So that way it chops everything up, and then he just takes that blender out there, and pulls, pulls the cap. Whoop. Mm -hmm. No onions or citrus. And whammo. And he puts the cap back on, and he's done. So then the worms are protected. You don't got to worry about you know Woody Woodpecker coming, coming by coming in and picking them up and uh -huh. picking them up. They're protected in this tube. They come up. They eat that stuff. They calm down. Mm -hmm. And then they go out into the raised bed through the holes. And they're leaving all their worm castings and stuff in your raised bed and mm -hmm. pooping and, mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff. And they're aerating that soil. And then they come back in to eat. Because they know where their food is. Yeah. And it's... Cool. So we're giving that a ago mm -hmm. uh, and um, to see how that see works. works. Why no onions? They stink. And the smell will attract some of your bigger predators. Mm -hmm. Your possums, your coons. Is the same thing with the citrus? Or? Well, the citrus takes forever to break down. Oh, okay. And most of your uh, worms can't eat the citrus. Okay. Cool. So no onions, because we always cut the tops off and the bottoms off of the onions. Well, look, Although here's the, bottoms, the thing. We're gonna start we're taking gonna the start, bottoms. Yeah, that was amazing, and we we planted that, and we're starting to get an onion. Yeah, yeah, pretty neat. Yeah, Carol literally took the bottom of an onion, dropped it in a little tumbler of water, and it sprouted. Mm-hmm. You blend the citrus a little bit easier for the worms to eat. Sup, Floyd? Hi, by the way. <laughs> Wayne in the house. Woo Put citrus in white cinnamon. Yeah. So that's what we do. Like we take the peels and then here's the cool thing. If you take the, the peels It's on back scrubby. Put them in, yeah. You put them in a jar, fill it up with vinegar, seal it, let it sit for a little while. Um I then take the peels out and I use the pith, which is the yell the white stuff underneath the peel and if you scrub using that, it's almost like a magic eraser. It's pretty cool. So, okay, so Be Tim Beverly says, onions are not recommended for addition to vermicomposting bids. Worms are not big fans of odorous food scraps and will turn their metaphorical noses up at onions as well as broccoli, potatoes, and garlic. Huh. I always put banana peels on my roses. So we don't have roses, so. <laughs> Coffee grounds work good for roses also. Mm -hmm. Coffee grounds. You can go by Starbucks and get coffee grounds. And that's the thing. And here's the thing, y'all. This is the best kept secret on the planet. And it's not really a secret. Starbucks. If you're having trouble getting stuff for your compost. <laughs> Yes. 
when you need to start the turkey legs? Probably now. We're still on live, you know. And you just interrupted the class. <laughs> hey, can you do me a favor? Please? Please? I love you forever. Yeah, can you go to the closet and hang this up for me? <laughs> Underhills have a lot of coffee grounds. Yeah, I, I bet. We have quite a few too, but the thing is, is that um, Starbucks, Starbucks will give it to you for free. You mm -hmm. just go up to them and start talking to them, talk to the manager. They will give you trash cans. And they, loads. yeah, they have a ton. Now, I another here's another thing that you could soil. get from them. Hmm. They go through roughly what what did that one lady say? Oh my god. Five hundred gallons of milk. A I don't day. remember what it was. It was crazy. Isn't Starbucks anti military? I've heard that. I get a military discount when I go in. Yeah, but we get a military discount every time we go. I don't know. Um, we don't go very often, but they always give us one. And then the other thing too is I mean, if you choose not to vote to vote with your dollar that way. I mean, you're not really supporting them by taking their yeah. stuff. I mean, and, but ask them if you can have the milk jugs. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that you can do with a milk jug. Especially a good thing for um, for the time of year we're getting ready to be into is watering in seeds and things like that. You can take an old milk jug, pop some holes in the top of the the lid. And walk around and use it just like a flower. Yeah, we, we've done that a couple of times. I didn't really like that, but it, it, that was just my own personal thing. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it worked I, well. I well, just didn't like it. What I'm thinking is, especially for children, it gives the children, yes. you know, a way to be able to do it. I like making bird feeders out mm -hmm. of them. I think they're really sharp. If mm -hmm. you let your kids decorate them up real nice, mm -hmm. you make it a three or four window one, and you take a dowel or some sticks, run it through the bottom. Mm -hmm. Birds can perch. Mm -hmm. You get them decorated up, painted up real nice. They don't even really look like a milk jug anymore. Donna S. asked, why are coffee grounds good for roses? Keep pests away or for another reason? Uh, it's... There is something, and I can't recall right of it right off the top of my head, but there is something in coffee grounds that roses love, just like their calcium with the eggshells. Um, but there's something specific in coffee grounds that roses just love. Acidic. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, yeah. is that the acidity helps with the pH. So, yeah, it helps with the soil. Slugs don't like coffee grounds. <laughs> well, there you go. That's a good one, too. Yeah, I learned that from that old book you got me. That was that when you bought that combination of, combination of books that had the trees, the roses, uh -huh, the vegetables. Uh -huh. I picked that one up and read it, and it was in there with the roses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would be good around the blueberries, then? Uh... Blueberries need acidity. Um, we mulched one year with, the very first year we mulched with pine straw. Because pine straw is very acidic. Mm -hmm. This year we put down hay mm -hmm. on top of it. Next year it is be, dirty hay. Yeah, it's dirty it's hay. hay that they've been pooping around, stepping in, pounding into the dirt. Next year will be pine straw again, mm -hmm. and then it'll be hay. Back and forth. And it'll be kind of like a lasagna of that through it, because you don't want to do it all of the time. Right. With. What? Why won't I let me do that? I'll just do it later. Yeah. Plastic milk jugs are a good greenhouse protect. Yeah, that's another thing. You can make mm -hmm. it a cloche. Isn't that what they call them? Cloche, yep. And you just cut the bottom out of it, and you can put it over on top of. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Milk jugs are awesome for those. Those are a bet. Mm -hmm. Those and, and two, quick. two liter bottles are the bomb. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing: you can cut the bottom off of the milk jug, right? Put use the top part of the milk jug as your cloche. Mm -hmm. Take the bottom part, stick it in with your baby chicks. You can put the feed in that, or you can put water in there. Mm -hmm. But if you're gonna do water, make sure you put pebbles 
um, mm -hmm. or marbles or whatever in there because you don't want them to. Um, you're making a soil party. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Yeah, the um, the other good thing you can use the bottom for um, is, you know, we, and we're running out of this. Um, they like the nitrogen content in the coffee grounds. There you go. Good call, Suburban. There's nitrogen in them. So that's what helps with the rises. Um, a good book is vinegar, duct tape, milk jugs, and more. That sounds like a book up our alley. We need, need to, to need to look that book up. Yeah. Mama, do you have that book on your Amazon links? Yeah, go ahead and link that so that we can because I'm not gonna write it down. Um I was gonna say oh, so like for our bees. We need a bird bath for our bees. And one of the reasons I don't fuss at my girls for leaving lids hanging around out in the in the pastures um, is because they catch the rainwater, and then the rainwater is around every once in a while for the bees to get to. <laughs> so, like the the bucket lids are the best because they can still perch on the side of the rim of the bucket lid. But we're getting ready to do a bird bath here pretty soon. So since the door kind of got pushed open a little bit what i'm gonna kick it up uh-oh i don't know if y'all been watching the news um or not but with everything that's going on in syria oh everything that's going on here with our food and everything we have been double checking and triple checking our library yes and just like we we used to have the LDS prepping book. Yeah, the prepping manual. Because we, we got a PDF. <laughs> yeah, and, and we it was printed on it the out. old computer. We mm -hmm. never printed it oh, out. Oh, no, we had it. That's right. We, we had, had it on the old, on the old computer, computer. And that old computer crashed. Uh-huh. And it's literally sitting in my shop because mm -hmm. I'm thinking about taking it apart and trying to get the gold off of it. Mm -hmm. um, but now we didn't have access to it. So now we're looking at getting the hard copy. Of mm -hmm. that one, yeah. Um, yeah. You know that new book that Kitty brought to light with that was uh, done with uh, Breakaway Homestead. Yeah, Breakaway Homestead featured yeah. the other night. Yeah. Put the old hard drive in the new computer. <laughs> Isn't, that cute? Isn't that it's cute? cute? That's, That's really cute. cute. That's cute, Kitty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, because that's, that's Jason cute. can do that. Yeah, that's cute, yeah. <laughs> I'll just slap it right in there. <laughs> really? <laughs> I call you when my email don't open up correctly. Takes 30 seconds and two wires. Always on the lookout for Foxfire books on the cheap. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> Bring it up here. You know someone who can do that. <laughs> but, but then all my porn's on that, Mom, and I don't want you to see all my porn. <laughs> but all that to say, what we're saying is um, it, it's always nice to still have a hard copy. Yeah. And we, we were talking about that because um, it's like 200 and something pages, like 222 pages. pages. And we were going to print it out because we have a, a contract with uh, Hewlett Packard every month. We're allowed to print so many pages for a fee and then they replace our ink. Yeah, Kitty by C wires, I want to cut them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but we're allowed to print um, 300. And so I told him if we get closer to the end of the month, we might, you know, print it out. But. No wonder your computer crashed. No, it wasn't back to basics. It was the one that Kitty, Kitty uh, did, and then he gave it no, away. The one about stocking up or yeah. whatever. Yeah. That's the one that uh, Breakaway just gave away. He gave everybody the link to the free download yeah. version yeah. of it. Stocking up. That's it. Stocking up. Yep. You know, and we're double checking, triple checking all of our stuff. If you haven't looked at your food stock, look at it now. Mm -hmm. Rotate the stuff out that's getting close to being old. Go buy some new stuff. 
and rotate it out. You should be doing your oars anyway. Mm -hmm. um, get all of that stuff in line. That's the PDF if the yeah. link works. And we're going to be beefing up our chickens. Yeah, we're getting and, ready to order more and, uh, laying hens. I'm putting all, I'm taking my ducks will no longer be free ranged. They're going to be in their own little, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to make them movable, but they're going to be in some type of a egg mobile or maybe a permanent coop situation. Ooh, what's he making we'll out there right now? That's an egg mobile. That's a new and improved egg mobile. But that's what you just said. You weren't sure if you were going to build an egg mobile. No, oh, for the ducks. Oh, for They're the ducks. ducks. And uh, we're going to start logging some stuff down again. Because mm -hmm. the world is crazy. Well, it's like we've got all these ducklings now. And we've got to raise them up and eat them. Because, I mean. Oh, I mean. We, we've already populated half of Elberton with Muscovy ducks because we know. let them. Yeah, I'm fitting to go collect them. I'm finna collect them So all. that's a video you guys will want to see. Me and my GoPro. <laughs> Have it strapped to my head. And blaze with a net. There's one. Get it, boy. Watch. <laughs> Face first in the beaver pond. Wouldn't be the first time. Mm -mm. Probably won't be the last either. This is also the time to start honing in on skills. If you were thinking about trying to dip your toe in the trapping. Or hunting. Mm -hmm. Or foraging. Yep. Now's the time. Definitely. Now is the time. Uh, checked Rural King today and no turkeys. We were at Tractor Supply today and those turkeys were gone. Yeah. Somebody we swept them buy, up. We were going to yep. buy them up. Yeah, I kind of got fussed at for not getting them. I didn't tell him they were there. I really should have just picked up the well. What happened is he was working and he had a really busy day yesterday. So I didn't. I had to deliver car tires. <laughs> <laughs> Who sends car tires through the mail? <laughs> I mean, wow. <laughs> you cracked me up too. You're like, I have to deliver a freaking tire. <laughs> Our tractor supply here has turkeys. Yep. Guineas and ducks? Huh. I want to get some guineas again. Forget it, I can't spell Mama didn't like to type. She'd rather talk to you than type. And she loves some Facebook. Hmm. I'll tell you, and I thought my zillion boxes were bad. <laughs> David says both of my brothers ordered their tires through the mail. I couldn't believe it. They rolled them over to me and said, you had to deliver these today. I'm like, what? <laughs> they had them, literally took like saran wrap, wrapped the tires up. Slap the postage on it. Yep. Next move is in Russia's hands. And if China is aligned with them, we can kiss our butts. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? That doesn't bother me. And just like Trump needs to go pick something else to go be fussing at and leave Amazon alone. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing. The United States Post Office is a private company. We don't get taxes in any way, shape, or form. How the post office pays us and how it pays for the rent for their buildings, the upkeep of the vehicles, all of that stuff is through the sale of postage. Mm -hmm. So when you guys are, when everybody starts fussing about because stamps went up to 50 cents, stamps went up to 50 cents because gas went up to almost $3 a gallon. Yep. And it's staying there. It's not moving. And car parts went up. So that's why stamps go up. Mm -hmm. It's not really we're getting paid more. It's the, the cost of on everything. Doing everything. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. a lot of people think that we're federally funded and we get paid by taxpayers. No, no. they don't. We don't. Well, I mean, inadvertently you do. Because the taxpayers pay for the stamps. Well, I mean, no different than McDonald's gets paid by the taxpayers. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah. So... Mr. Uh -huh. Mr. President, if you are 
having to catch my live stream right here. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you look like an idiot. <laughs> Leave Amazon and the post office the hell alone. <laughs> I just got the job. I don't need to be getting laid off because of you. Jason, UPS, FedEx, they all have a deal with the USPS yep. and drop off for you for you to deliver. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you know what? I'm okay with that too. Because you know what? FedEx more than more than UPS. No, I'm sorry. UPS more than FedEx is getting very close to probably going out of business because of the people that they hire. Really? More and more people are coming back to the United States Postal Service because UPS and FedEx, their personnel for delivery have been known to get frustrated, pull off on the side of the road and push all the stuff out of the truck and, and drive off. Huh. They've been known to just, I mean, well, we've seen it. Just tie stuff to a gate and have a nice day. Yeah, Goodbye. I mean. Bye, Felicia. We had a computer. That he laid up underneath a tree. And you couldn't even see it. <laughs> FedEx is responsible for the new speed bumps in our driveway. Yep. <laughs> And more and more people. And look, I'm one of them now. I'll ask if, well, who are you shipping this through? Mm -hmm. Well, UPS. Nah, give it here. I'll ship it. Mm -hmm. I'll pay the shipping to let it go to the United States Postal Service. Because here's the thing. Nine times out of ten, the United States Postal Service is cheaper mm -hmm. than FedEx and UPS. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of ten, it's coming to us anyway. More and more packages are getting brought through whew, mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And we're better looking. And friendlier. <laughs> we'll politely remind you go check your mailbox, it's full. I don't want to have to put your stuff on a 10 day hold. Hmm. Amazon has some kind of deal. No way yep. I could afford. But you know what? I don't necessarily agree with that on some things. I mean, obviously your bigger packages stuff. Yes. When you start getting into the bigger stuff, definitely. Um, like I sent some rat traps yesterday and for them to get from here to North Dakota, they're in North Dakota, right? It was almost $17. Mm -hmm. But it'll be there in like two, it'll still be there two or three days. I mean, it will get there pretty mm -hmm. quick. It's priority mail. Um, what, I don't, what has caused all the delay lately on the priority mail? I haven't seen a delay. I don't know. We. I haven't, anything that I've shipped has still only taken a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Off-grid nation had a FedEx driver run over his porch. <laughs> and I, I mean, and that's that's what I'm talking about. USPS is who we are using for shipping the yarn store because it's only three seventy-five to ship yarn. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know about UPS or UPS or FedEx, but like if you're sending books. You know, there's a media, like, mm -hmm. it's a flat rate to send it for a certain size or whatever. That's also cool, too. Yeah. I like that. We, we, the United States Postal Service, we do our best to try to make, keep it to the lowest mm -hmm. price possible and have the best customer service possible. Mm. So, Steve said that all the bad weather has disrupted flights lately. My mailbox is usually empty because she only and that and that I bet this like. last week the mail has been what they call heavy. We had on Saturday, it took me two trips to get all the packages out into my Jeep. There was, but I had a lot of large packages and tires. Um, another one of my brother carriers, he literally had two buggies full of packages. Mm. Two buggies full of packages, and he still beat me back. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, like, Michelle had, like, seven packages that she had to pick up. She well, some, 
She some people, right, some people are doing a lot of ordering on Amazon mm -hmm. instead of going to the stores, going into the malls, things like that. It's just so much easier for some people to be able to do it that way. Yep. And, um... And, and Michelle was so cute. <laughs> you could tell that she uses the essential oils. Mm -hmm. And she ran out. And so she was counting down the minutes <laughs> until that box got, got there. there. Mm-hmm. Been there. Yeah. In my defense, we had a birthday to celebrate today. <laughs> and my <laughs> drug habit. <laughs> hmm. You know, so... Look, everybody, I tell everybody... Please, I, when I learned all that information, and now that I am a postal carrier, send stuff through the UPS or USPS. Mm -hmm. Also, if you can afford to, go buy a large mailbox. Mm -hmm. Large mailbox. And the big, large black ones, Michelle. <laughs> Because then if you get a small package, you know, nothing real huge, like a doTERRA box or, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that, we can, it helps out the carriers, we can put that in your, in your mailbox, and it helps keep it protected. It would just get stolen. Really? I don't, I've never, I haven't had, heard of anybody else complaining. About what? Stuff getting stolen on their street. Oh, I don't know. You yeah. know. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to switch to the biggest thinking mailbox I can find. Yeah. Plus, that way, when I'm mailing y'all stuff out, I don't have to try to fight with the local post office. I can... Oh, it's just a bad name uh, the room. Yeah, no, that's, and that's one of the things, like, with our website, we can print labels straight from our website through the, UP, through the USPS. Mm -hmm. And have the labels, as long as we have the weights right, which is what we do to be able to calculate it, um... That's good knowledge to know, Michelle. That we uh, we could slap that sticker straight on it, and if we put it out in the mailbox, if it'll fit, then they'll pick it up and right. take it straight. And even if it won't fit, you can schedule a uh, a package pickup. Pick, package yeah, pick that's true. And you just type it in on the computer mm -hmm. that you need the package picked up on this day. Mm -hmm. When you're gonna leave it? Mm -hmm. Where you're gonna leave it? I'll get a printout, or your carrier will get a printout, and it'll say one package, two packages, eight packages. I get those just about almost every weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like having a P.O. box, so if I have something coming I'm worried about going missing, it's, it goes to the post office box. See, we don't, we don't have that issue. Yet. Yet. Depends on what people move into the new areas. I love the new dashboard. The dashboard. I don't know what she's talking about. The dashboard. On the computer for the uh, postal service. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It is pretty nice. Yeah. We had some guys a few years back following the mailman and stealing packages. Well, look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. that If, if Donald Trump really wanted to pick a fight with the... Postal Service, he should pick it on whether or not we can conceal carry or carry weapons in our car. Since Christmas, now this is nationwide, there has been four that I'm aware of, four royal carriers that have been shot in the head. The, the guy's perpetrator walked right up, just shot him in the head and started going through his mail looking for checks. We're not allowed to carry any, we're not allowed to carry mace, mm -hmm. a taser, nothing. Not, we're not allowed to carry anything. Mm -hmm. We're vulnerable. The only thing that we got is dog spray. Now, I had to spray right. a dog this, this yesterday. Very entertaining. Very entertaining. This was just one of the mean, little mean dogs. And no matter what you did, he was still coming to bite you. And I kept the package between me and him. Um, and he went to come over, and I just and he went to rolling around, mm -hmm. <laughs> rubbing his face on the dirt. And I went up to the 
uh, mm -hmm. porch. Mm -hmm. Scan Scanned the package. It in, came back. By then, he was back up, ready to bite again, and I hit him again. By hit him, you mean sprayed him yep. again. Yeah. And it doesn't like, I mean, it just kind of stuns them. So, yeah. So, Steve said concealed means concealed, just saying, yeah, but you, yep. I mean, if you ever have to use it. We can go to jail. Because it's considered a federal property, right? You're, you're. Yep. Your truck or your vehicle carrying federal exchange can yep. be considered you do federal anything property. to a mail carrier, it is automatically a federal Felony. crime. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I don't understand because we're a private company. Right. Not affiliated uh, with it. But hey. I guess they didn't change the laws when they changed yeah. the privatization of it, so I don't know. MPA, if you have a permit, they allow them to carry. That's supposed to be a nationwide thing. Yeah. I don't know. Well, if you what if you're also a sworn deputy? They don't mm -hmm. care. No, no, it's supposed to carry. They don't care. Look, these are the same people that will tell you flat out in their safety video that if you overload the forklift and the forklift tips, you, <laughs> you will be, be fired. You will be fired. <laughs> you will don't be jump fired. out of the, don't, because it, the exact wording was, don't jump out of the forklift. Hold on to the steering wheel because you don't want to be fired, fired and, and dead. dead. <laughs> you want to be just fired. Mm -hmm. All right, so a couple minutes until. Yep, it's time. Yep. So it's time for us to go watch the season finale. <laughs> yes, there will be insomnia tonight. So I will be back on right after the finale of The Walking Dead. Um. You're not going to watch. I'm not going to watch uh, Fear of the Walking Dead. I'll catch that on the replay. Um, so. Ha! Ha ha! I'll have to give classes on how to change out the capacitors on cattle prods with microwave oven capacitors and teach how to use them. <laughs> They're legal to carry. Ha 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 ha! Huh. Yeah. All right. Um, so be looking for me to jump back on probably right around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Depends on how things go. If they put the Talking Dead on after the finale, I may watch that. But if they start to bore me, I will. Yeah. I'll come on. So remember, be kind to one another. You don't know what that other person is going through. Reuse, recycle, repurpose. Keep stuff out of our landfills. Give our wildlife a chance. That's it. Thank you guys. Love you and see you in insomnia. Night. Night.